Finding ways to communicate with each other on a personal level across race, gender, and class. It's a strength that Kepra Institute is actively pushing throughout many communities in Indianapolis. News 8's Alexis Rogers sat down with one of the co-founders. Uh, she shares some of what he has to say about having real conversations to find the places that we could all potentially align. The art of growing transcends beyond what you may see on the surface. That's why the Kepra Institute has been sewing into the community for more than 20 years. Community empowerment through self-mastery. Doing the work, educating, empowering, adapting, and evolving as their members do. Housing people, feeding people, teaching them how to grow on their own is all for the sake of making our community stronger. From fellowships, programs, artwork, even school, the goal is to create a space for real talk and conflict transformation. That's where we start our conversation with executive director and co-founder Imhotep Adisa and the place where Kepra helps people and things grow. Community wealth building. Yeah. Seems like a powerful thing. It requires several components. The money always, which is overranked as it relates to its value in community wealth, social capital, my relationship with you, cultural capital, the things you create out of your own cultural experience, and intellectual capital, what you know. So right here in this community, intellectual capital is always undervalued. You have a responsibility to to, to talk, not just out of love, but out of, you know, responsible for community. So that's, that's kind of what we do. In a word, relationship building, out of uh, tough love and love, holding each other accountable to self and community. When it comes to tough conversations, I know you guys have a lot of conversations. As we've seen America change with the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, even in the midst of this election, what does your work look like in this space with having those conversations? More demand for, you know, we're, we have a reputation for being able to host difficult conversations around difficult topics with folks from all ends of the spectrum. So we've gotten a few more calls lately from institutions of power, organizations running controlled by white folks, and said, hey, can y'all help? And, but not just help through the lens of a racial equity training and uh, book reading and article reading, but more about how can we create space for real talk, real authentic communication within our spaces. So that's a new new demand in our space. Uh, we're trying to honor and uh, embrace the calling that's, that's been gifted to us that often can be seen as a burden. When it comes to the needs, you sit down and you talk to people from different spaces, different ages, all the time. What seems to be the need right now, especially as it pertains to mental health? I talked to my mother the day. She's 88. She's from uh, Canton, Mississippi. It, it's not some shock. It's not a space that's new. And so a lot of times when young people come here, we try real hard to say, yes, let's look at this challenge. Yes, it needs to be adjusted. Yes, we need to make structural changes in our communities. But what can you do right now in your own space and place to bring about the kind of change you want to see? The trauma that comes out of, out of these conditions, one from a racial perspective first, and the, and the, the disparities brought on by long historical challenges of racism, it's, it's ongoing trauma in our spaces. So we try to create a space that allows folk to talk about those traumas and challenges with each other. I had a friend of ours, a close friend of ours who works in our space, came over the day, wanted, called me up, wanted to have a conversation, sat out here on the porch and boo-hooed. I mean, just cried up and down. And, you know, we, we provide a space for that kind of, you know, get that off, release it, talk about it. Then we go back and check the next day, how you doing? What can we do? How can we be more supportive? My last question for you is, you know, we keep asking this question of how do we stand together as a city, as a community, in the midst of all of these things going on? So how do we? We got a country actually that's divided pretty much around the question of race, if we're honest about it. Not even about economics, just pretty much around the race question. That's not new, but it's been heightened and the current uh, political environment does not, is not providing right now space to allow us to 
find some ways to, to, to have real talk with each other that then can hopefully lead to increasing structural changes in, in places that, that definitely are critically in need of change. But without that, without the, starting with the conversations and some spaces that we can have authentic talk with each other, spirited uh, and even emotional, but without uh, having to say, okay, I can't talk to you no more, then I, I'm not real sure if, if it's addressing. That's a good point. Well said. Uh, remember, you can also listen to our We Stand Together podcast anytime. And you can see all of our We Stand Together profiles online at wishtv.com.